Hello friends, maybe foes. Today I'm going to talk about dressing up your character. We're, we're, we're going on a, on a trip to the mall and getting some, some clothes for your, your cute little OC. So obviously this is a part of character design. I always call it costuming when I'm talking about designing your comic characters. I don't know why, that's just the, the word that comes to mind. I find with like comics, a lot of the terms I use come from like film. <laughs> just because comics is like a weird medium and it draws from a lot of like different visual mediums. I don't know. There's lots of writing about films, but not quite as much about comics. I don't know if that's true. I mean, there's lots of writing about comics. Anyways, I'm rambling. Yeah, I call it costuming because I think of like my characters as actors. And when I think about like setting up a, a panel, uh, I, th I think about like camera angles and stuff. Anyways, costuming your characters. I got a few comments on my last video about character design saying that they have a lot of trouble with figuring out how to dress up their character, like finding inspiration for, for clothes clothing choices. And that is something that I have also struggled with in the past. I honestly, a lot of the time, if I was drawing a character in like a contemporary setting, I'd often just put them in like a t-shirt and jeans and very plain ones. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it, it creates very boring character designs when their costumes are very boring. I thought today I would go over some things you can think about when you're deciding on your character's clothing and costume. All these choices, obviously, like it highly depends on what your story is like and what your character is like, but I'll just go through a list of like things to consider that hopefully will inspire you when you're working on your character. So when you're dressing up your character, I think the first thing you should consider is the setting of your story. So this can be so many things. <laughs> it's like, where where is your story taking place? Is it a contemporary story set in New York City or Tokyo, Japan or Paris, France? You know, like, where is it taking place? Is it a fantasy world where, I don't know, the climate is completely alien to like what Earth is? Is it, you know, there's so many possibilities. But first think about like the setting. There's so many parts that go into that when considering your setting because yeah because like I said is it like what's the location of your story because like I said it could be like a real place on earth it could be a spaceship it could be a fantasy jungle it could be anything so that that's where to start because where it takes place really dictates what your characters will be wearing for example if they're in a spaceship I don't know maybe they need to wear like a spacesuit because it's not like sophisticated enough yet where they can wear like normal civilian clothing inside the spaceship, which will be very different than if they're just hanging out in New York City um, in 2023. So when you know the location, other things go into that. So like the climate of the setting, is it a cold climate? Is it a warm climate? What materials are available? This can be helpful if you're doing like a fantasy or sci-fi setting where you may have different answers than say like than the the contemporary fashion availability um or if you're doing something historical where i don't know maybe this person wouldn't have access to leather because it's the medieval times and they're not rich so they they wouldn't have that but yeah so that's all stuff to consider yep so climate materials then uh culture obviously um, so again, you can pull from real cultures if it's set in our world, but if you're working with like a fantasy setting, the culture could be totally different. And things that can go into that are like societal expectations, so like gender and class expectations within your, your, your society. Like you might have a world where it's similar to like, I don't know, a hundred years ago. <laughs> of our world where women were expected to wear dresses and men were expected to wear suit and ties or you could go completely different and maybe all the all the ladies are expected to wear pants and all the fellas have to wear robes I don't know it's up to you it's your world um but that's always something to consider and then class is another one to consider you know what do the wealthy wear versus what do people with lesser means wear always something to consider because once you start deciding all these setting things and start like needling down the next step is to really think about your character specifically and where they kind of land within your setting leading off like the the culture and societal expectations you can start with say like your character's economic status possibly are they someone who comes from a wealthy family 
Are they someone who came from a poorer family but has personal wealth that they built by being like, I don't know, an adventurer who slaughtered dragons and stole their horde and now they're rich, I don't know. What are their spending habits? Are they someone who is living off like a very small amount of money but they buy like the most expensive clothing, for example, that's something to think about. And that can be a jumping off point for your characters. But obviously, other things go into your character. And I find like when I when I sit down to like work on a character, this is usually where I start. I start with the character's personality. So like, are they cheerful? Or are they gloomy? Are they shy, outgoing? Are they a mean character? Are they a sweet character? Obviously, you'll have an understanding of what your character is like um, if you're getting to the design phase. But then to drill down from there, it's really important to understand your character's personality more than just like their personality traits. While they are important because the way that your character presents themselves with their fashion can definitely show off their personality. Someone who is more like cold and reserved might dress that way to kind of highlight their emotions and personality to your audience, uh, which is totally fine to do. But I think you can get more interesting designs if you really think about like what does your character enjoy what do they hate like what are their hobbies what styles do they like for example like someone who is a say they're like a, a rocker kind of character in a in a contemporary setting are they someone who they they like rock music they love that kind of edgy look they wear band t-shirts and leather jackets and they have a mullet versus a character who maybe has the same traits where they're like they're a rocker who likes an edgy kind of look but maybe they're more shy and they wear maybe they wear more kind of like more subdued clothing like cardigans and um long skirts but they'll sew band patches into their backpack, for example, where they're more subtle with their, their hobbies. So yeah, hobbies, what styles are they interested in? What is their occupation? That can obviously decide what they wear. If they're a businessman, they may wear, you know, the typical suit and tie you think of, or I don't know, maybe if they're like a blue collar worker, maybe they often wear their work uniform because they're working all the time. Obviously there's likes and dislikes um, and there's their personal values so that kind of goes into my next point about thinking about how your character wants to be perceived by the people around them whether that's like different social groups like friends versus family maybe like the society as a whole how how do they want to be perceived again I can go back to that example of like the the person who likes rock and roll where the person who's wearing like band t-shirts and leather jackets and stuff they might not care so much about fitting in with with the crowd, as it were. Maybe they like to stand out and be loud. Um, whereas the person who wears cardigans and keeps their interests to like little patches on their backpack, maybe they want to blend in. Maybe they don't want to rock the boat or stand out against anyone else. Um, and their values can go into this. You could have a very, um, you can have characters that are very like flamboyant and out there who really want to stand out. Maybe they really care about their appearance. You can also have a character who's like flamboyant and stands out because they don't care about their appearance. They could be sloppy or eccentric. You can have them be very well groomed. You know, does your character care about being comfortable or do they give up comfort to be fashionable? Are they someone who requires both comfort and fashion? Um, do they reject societal expectations? For example, um, a woman in the Victorian era wearing pants, or do they embrace them? You know, a woman in the Victorian era who wears the full dress and corset and gets a new dress every season kind of thing. And once you've decided all that stuff, so you, you understand your setting, you understand your character, their personality, how they present, how they present within their society versus their family versus their friends versus their work. The thing is your character can obviously have lots of different outfits. With comics, it definitely is easy to do like that like cartoon cliche where they wear the same thing every day just because it, it makes it easy to redraw over and over again. But obviously, your character can have different outfits throughout the story. That makes total sense. And they can present themselves differently in different situations. Um, so that is, again, something to think about. But uh, it's also okay for them to have one outfit. I'm not going to call you out on it. It's fine. Now, the next thing to consider is your character's function in the story. So this can come from like a high level, like thinking, are they your main character or your side character? Are they a hero or a villain? Because their function in the story will have different kind of like visual indicators to your audience and um, it also will help you consider the level of detail 
you want to include in your character's costume. So for example, main characters, really important characters to your story, will probably be more detailed. Especially your protagonists, you'll probably want them to have designs and outfits that really stand out and signify that they are the hero of the story. Whereas a side character who's maybe going to appear in one scene or a handful of scenes, they're not super important to the story. You may want to give them a simpler design, something that still fits in with the setting and the society that they're in and still fits in with the aesthetic of your, of your story or with your characters or against it depending on their role in the story. You probably want less detail because you're not going to spend as much time drawing them and it doesn't matter quite as much. Alternatively, I've also given advice where your main character should probably have like a simpler design, something that's easy to draw over and over again. And a character who shows up in a single scene, you can probably do a more detailed design because you only have to draw it once. But again, if they're a side character who doesn't matter, like not so much a background character, well, I guess that is something to consider because there are different levels of like <laughs> character significance because you have your main character, you have your side characters um, who maybe have like B plots or are like companions and allies or challenges to your characters then you'll have like I guess like side side characters who <laughs> maybe are you know your character's mom who's like not important to the story but she shows up in a couple scenes and then you'll have like I've heard them called spear holders which will be just like a background extra in in a in a story where they don't have any lines they're just they're more or less set dressing so like if you're drawing a crowd scene the characters that fill up the crowd that are not main characters or side characters, um, those would be like background characters. But anyway, so for background characters, uh, you probably don't want to put too much detail in because you don't want them to stand out in that crowd scene and take attention away from your main characters or your focal point. But yeah, but as your characters get more significant, you're going to have to draw them more. So, you know, y you can fight it out with yourself whether you want them to be simple or ornate. It's up to you. How much work do you want to put in? I won't judge. But yeah, those are all things to consider. The character's function in the story can dictate a lot about how you design their clothing and how detailed and intricate and how much you care about it. Also, the role your character plays. So I'm thinking hero versus villain, protagonist versus antagonist, which aren't necessarily the same thing. You could have your villain character be your protagonist, which would be like the person pushing the action forward in your story. Um, and the antagonist uh, could be the typical hero. Um, the antagonist is just who's ever is facing off against your your protagonist, who's getting in their way. They don't, an antagonist doesn't have to be evil. Um, but anyways, but talking about heroes and villains, there is a bit of a, a visual language to those kinds of characters. If I'm thinking about like color palettes, typically, again, not always the case, but typically a hero palette will usually comprise of like primary colors to so think like red, blue, yellow. Um, whereas villain characters tend to be secondary colors. Think like purple and green and uh, orange are kind of like the evil colors. <laughs> very Halloween. So considering that kind of like color palette, shapes can go into it, shape language, for example, triangles are often associated with like trickstery characters think foxes and they can often be villains, or something that's more round can be very soft and sweet and something square can be very sturdy or can be associated with like protagonist characters or hero characters, I mean. So these are things to consider when designing your clothing. If you want to say tip off to the audience, like, oh, this character, he looks nice but look at all those triangles in his in his uh, his outfit. Like, he's, he's up to no good. He's being a trickster. So that's something you can look into as well to consider with your costuming, the function in the story, and what you want to convey to your audience. All this stuff is very like stereotypical. So you can, you can lean into it or you can lean away from it. For example, you can have a character who their design looks very, very sweet and round and soft. Maybe they wear clothing that, that is stereotypically like a very like, nurturing soft sweet character but then it turns out he is a nasty mean fellow who kicks puppies you know like you don't have to lean into the stereotypes another thing to consider <laughs> in my notes i called it the necessity of visual mediums so what i'm thinking of when i say that is bones and i have a comic called the scourge of nine point that is all about cat knights it's in like a medieval inspired setting it's like a fantasy story where we have knights who wear armor and such but we don't typically put helmets on them because we want to show 
the faces of our characters. Now, it doesn't make sense because they would wear helmets if they're going into battle because it's safer for you, obviously. Instead of getting your skull bashed in, you'd get your helmet bashed, you know, a little less damage to your noggin. But since it's a comic and we want to easily convey like emotions, we decided no helmets. It's just easier for us. We like the way it looks. So that's something you can consider. You know, it doesn't have to be helmets for knights. It could be, I'm struggling to think of another example without going into my next point, but I think there are some situations where it's hard to do that. For us with the with our cat knights, it's easy because it, the helmets aren't a necessity like for survival, I guess. Like, you know, they'd help the survival of the characters, but um, it's not like if I was making a comic set in outer space and I have my characters in the vacuum of space and they're not wearing helmets. I feel like I need an in-universe like explanation as to why they can be out there without a helmet. Um, otherwise, I would probably would want to design a spacesuit with a helmet where I can easily see the characters' faces if I want to make sure that like I'm showing the, their emotion on their face if I care about that for that scene in that story. So you can do it where you want to. There's a bit of a rule of cool if you like it, but it doesn't necessarily make total sense. Like it's a little impractical, but it's cool and you like it. I say go for it, you know? Necessity of the visual medium. That's what you can tell your critics, okay? And the final thing to think about along that same line uh, is the genre or purpose of your story. So the last thing to consider when costuming your characters is what's the, what's the feel? What's the atmosphere of your story? Is it supposed to be cozy and soft and inviting? Maybe you want all of them to be wearing very cozy clothes that make you just feel good. They make you feel warm when you look at them, you know? Or is it a very like gritty, grim, dark fantasy where everything needs to look like it's rotted away and uncomfortable and painful, you know? There's definitely that to consider. I, I mean, some of that can go into your setting, but sometimes it can be regardless of your setting and it depends on the, the, the tone of your story. Um, another thing to consider is like, if you're doing a sexy romance comic, you know, titillation can sometimes override function. We do hate the, the, the booby window on armor, for example, <laughs> in, in a lot of uh, media. However, if you're doing a sexy romance comic with night, sometimes you can have the booby window in the armor. And that's okay. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm giving you permission, but like, understand what you're doing, okay? Don't just throw those around willy-nilly, okay? Let's not get out of hand here. Yeah, so that is what you can consider when you are addressing your character. Again, none of this is like hard, fast rules. It's just hopefully this will inspire you when you are thinking about it. The last thing I think I will list off is some places to look for inspiration. Cause I know sometimes when you're designing a character, you're like, oh, I really want to put in like different motifs or maybe I want to make like an armor set for this character, but have it like, I don't want it to be generic medieval knight. You know, I want it to be more visually interesting than that. Or maybe I want to do like a, like a historically accurate dress or something. There's, there's sometimes when you're just sitting in front of your piece of paper, drawing out your character, it can be really hard to think of something interesting. So I'm just gonna list out some places to like look and pull inspiration from. Just cause sometimes when you're sitting in front of a blank page, it's hard to come up with this on your own. So places to start looking. A good place to look is obviously current fashion trends. So like look at clothing stores, um, look at their websites. You can look in magazines. That one's weird to me. I've never read a magazine, but I know people do. Um, you can look at social media. You can look at fashion videos on YouTube. There's so many. There's historical fashion channels. There's current fashion channels. There's people who do reviews on like different clothing pieces, obviously. You can look into like aesthetics and mood boards. A Tumblr used to be a really great place for this. I think obviously it's all over every social media. But if you can think of an aesthetic title like cottagecore, just go looking for it. People have made lookbooks and mood boards for this, I promise. Another place to look would be like niche communities. Reddit could be a place to look into this. Tumblr again. It's along the same line of aesthetics, but if you're looking into, again, say that rocker, you could say like, I'm gonna look at a concert of this like one band and see what everyone wears there, you know? Dig deep in your research. <laughs> Um, next can be, uh, more historical fashion stuff. So like I said, there's, um, YouTubers who do historical fashion. They'll cover that from all sorts of fashion periods. 
um, and cultures. Books on fashion are so good to look at. Um, when I was doing research for Nine Point, my, my night cat comic, um, I went to the library and took out a bunch of books about medieval armor and medieval clothing, and I learned a whole lot and got a lot of inspiration um, that you can't always find on the internet, my friends. Uh, you can look into documentaries. Um, historical documents are one of my favorite things to look at. I love finding like old advertisements for like hair tonics and like 1950s vacuum ads. Like that stuff is so fun where you can see like what either photographers took note of or like what illustrators did back in the day. That's so fun. Another place to draw inspiration from is nature. So animals, plants, fungi, minerals and gems, outer space, different like climates and biomes, like rainforest versus desert versus ocean. There's so much stuff in nature. You just look through all of like the kingdoms and species and all that good stuff of animals and plants and there's just so much great stuff to pull from. For example, if you're designing, I guess this isn't a costume, but if you're designing a dragon, just look up real reptiles. There's so much to pull from. They're so cool. So I guess in this case, if you're designing um, dragon inspired armor, look up um, a cool lizard. Design the armor off that cool lizard. But it's a dragon, you know? <laughs> Other things to pull from, uh, you could get a lot of ideas from machinery. So looking at different like cars or uh, industrial vehicles, like, I don't know, uh, backhoes and stuff. I don't know machinery. Um, architecture, there's so many different like, so many different styles and periods in architecture. That can be a road you can go down if you're looking at like historical fashion, for example. If you look into like the architecture at the same time, you could probably find some really interesting motifs and design elements to pull from. You can look at technology, for example, like um, looking at like steam power technology versus like uh, maybe more current like computery stuff versus like diesel power. Um, you can, you know, that's where like, um, that's where like steampunk comes from, like looking at old, old aesthetics and old technology and creating fashion from that. And obviously design trends historically, by that I don't necessarily mean like fashion trends, it could be just general design trends. Think like mid-century modern as an example, and there's many more you can look into. But I'm thinking, oh my god, oh my god, you okay, Mothy? Oh my god, my cat just jumped up onto the printer, which is next to the computer, and she didn't land right and she grabbed hold of like the front panel of the printer and it oh my god i'll see what did you do oh my god she pulled like the front panel off the printer uh not fully so it didn't like damage it but now the printer's beeping <laughs> Maldi. trouble okay um gosh what was i saying right but i don't mean fashion trends historically design trends um or architecture i'm more talking about like furniture or like home aesthetic or business aesthetic that kind of thing what was the design sensibility is it super ornate is it super simple etc and obviously other places to draw from mythology all kinds of mythologies there's so many cool things to pull from whether it's like can you hear the dogs barking anyways other places to pull from are like mythology, so much cool stuff to pull from there. Um, you could do something as basic as like shapes and geometry. You can look at like really organic natural shapes. You can look into like the typical geometric shapes. And finally, other places to pull from for like inspiration, just look at stories you love, whether it's like comics you've seen, maybe there's an aesthetic in there that you really, really want to like to mirror. You know, obviously don't copy it exactly, but maybe you can do like a little homage to it. You can look at movies. Um, movies are fun because uh, the costuming that goes into the actors, there's typically like a team that puts all that together. So you can, you can find some really interesting little tidbits when you look at a, a movie characters, clothing choices, um, and you can pull inspiration from that. Video games, same idea, um, animations you love, artwork, whether it's historical or like a current illustrator you love. Pulling inspiration from all that stuff is a really great place to look. Um, and again, obviously don't copy it exactly, but you can do homage, you can get ideas and kind of go from there. And that's it. I hope this was inspiring. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, is there anything I missed? There's probably lots I missed because there's so much you can consider when you are dressing up your character or designing your characters because 
you know, your characters are people, or at least anthropomorphize. And, you know, people are multifaceted. There's so much that goes into them. Yeah. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if there's anything I missed. Please consider liking the video if you liked it and you're inspired. Uh, that would help us out a lot and I would appreciate it. Um, so thank you, friends and foes. I'll see you later. Goodbye.